Hey, it's Dino from Google. I'm an Apogee expert. And today I want to talk to you about some of the caching policies in Apogee X. Uh, Apogee X has, oh, I don't know, 40 odd built-in policies. Um, the documentation for these things are, is really good, um, really well explained and clear. It is pretty thorough. Um, so maybe not an easy read, but the, the reference documentation is really helpful when you're trying to use them. There are three policies that I want to talk to you about today. That's uh, populate cache, lookup cache, and invalidate cache, which do what you think they would do. Populate cache inserts an element into a cache. Lookup retrieves an element, invalidate, erases an element in the cache. Let's see how they work. Uh, I'll just give you the brief highlights here. All three of them use uh, the same kind of cache key, and it is what I call a composite cache key, which allows you to specify a fixed prefix, optional if you want, and then one or more key fragments, which can be variable, can be determined by the value of context variables at the time of the request. So one example of a context variable might be a, um, the value of a query parameter. I can use that as uh, a key fragment in a cache key. Um, and then um, I can build up this cache key from a number of different fragments. And that's what I mean by composite. We can compose the cache key from a number of different um, context variables and come up with one cache key and then insert a value into the cache, the Apogee cache, uh, for that particular cache key. So it might be client ID plus um, a query parameter, or it might be IP address plus something else, or um, you know, you, lots of flexibility in how you uh, determine what the value of a cache key is. What gets cached when you call populate cache policy is um, whatever data is in the context variable specified in the source element. So when Apogee executes a populate cache, it inserts the value of the context variable uh, at the time of the request into the cache uh, under the key identified by the cache key property. And then you can set the timeout. Um, this is a simple example where it times out in a certain number of seconds, but you can also have a timeout at a certain time of day uh, or um, on a date, on a particular date. Lookup cache works similarly with the cache key. Uh, rather than populate, it assigns whatever is in the cache to a particular um, context variable. Invalidate cache works as you would imagine. You can specify the cache key, uh, which is composite, and it just um, invalidates the entries in the cache. So what I'd like to do is flip over to my Apogee X window and show you um, an API proxy that I've set up that can illustrate or demonstrate these, um, these three policies. I've got an API proxy here. It's a loopback proxy, by which I mean requests that you send into the proxy, they don't go to some upstream system. Really, um, the Apogee proxy is just configured to interact with the cache, either populate cache, look up cache, or invalidate the cache, um, and then respond back directly to the caller. So there's no upstream system it's a loopback proxy. Um, and uh, I've got a number of different flows here, like different uh, possibilities for populating and invalidating and so on. The thing I want to show you, though, is um, the simple case where I populate the cache with no, um, no prefix in the cache key. So let's have a look at what this policy looks like. Um, I, I said that the prefix is optional. Here I've commented out the, the prefix. So my cache key is really just one key fragment and it's really referring to the query param um, named ID. So what that means is when a request comes in and it's, it bears an ID query param, that is the thing that will be used for the cache key, only that. Uh, and what it's caching in this cache policy is request content. So that's the full body of the request. So I can attach this to a um, request flow on, on the proxy endpoint uh, with a post, and whatever is posted will get cached under that um, query param. Uh, then there's a corresponding lookup cache policy, which does the same cache key. 
just using the query param ID and um, assigns it to a uh, context variable, a newly um, created context variable. If, if the cache is um, warm, that is to say, if the cache has an entry for this, then this variable will get the value. If the cache does not have a value for the key um, with, this, uh, with the ID uh, query param, then um, there will be no lookup and this variable will, will not get uh, a value. And then finally, um, the invalidate uh, works similarly. I just specify um, the same cache key and it invalidates. All right, so let's actually see this work. I'll flip over to the debug tab. Um, and, and I'll uh, start a debug session. Now, flipping to my terminal, um, what I'd like to do is uh, invoke the endpoint for that particular proxy. Uh, it listens on that base path. And uh, first thing I want to do is look up with no prefix. This is just the um, path suffix that one of my flows uh, works on. And I'm going to pass the, um, the ID of let's say five. It doesn't matter, it can be any string. Um, but we're doing a get uh, and we're going to try to read from cache for um, the cache key that is just identified by five. Uh, and as you can see, the, the response comes back. There's nothing here. Let me flip back to my debug. This is the request that came in. Um, this is the lookup cache uh, policy. And it's what it's telling us is um, there's a cache miss. Uh, for that particular uh, ID. If I send in another uh, ID, you know, we would expect this cache to be cold. Uh, there's no entries for that. We can populate. Let's populate something for ID5. So we'll change that base path. And I do need to pass something. So this is um, the value to be cached. Um, so that's what we're entering for ID5. And then if I go query ID5, I'll get that back. If I query ID6, uh, I still get nothing. I can populate a course for ID6. Um, we'll call this something else. And now if I do a lookup on ID6, I should see something else. And in the trace, you'll see all of that. So here's my, um, my uh, get on ID6 before I populate it. It's a cache miss. Here's the populate for ID6 and I'm populating something else. And then here's the, the lookup for, for ID6 and I'm getting that value back. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is the invalidate. Uh, and what I'll do is invoke another flow, which will tickle the invalidate policy. This needs to be a post, so I'll pass an empty payload. And I'm just saying to Apogee, you know, invalidate the entry that you have uh, stored at this, at the cache key for six. So after that, if I do a lookup on six, I should expect to see nothing, and that's correct. Whereas if I do a lookup on ID five, I should still expect to see the value that I originally cached some time ago. If I wait long enough, then the cache will, the cache will automatically expire. The cache entries will automatically expire. And I think the way we configured it was um, after 180 seconds. So if I wait three minutes, th this cache will just empty out by itself. Um, but we won't demonstrate that here. So that should give you uh, a quick overview of the cache policies in Apogee X. Hope this has been helpful. Till next time, keep it digital.